These gooners have still about 15 mile to go to get home, but they needed fuel. I was happy to give them some, but they insisted on giving me some fruit in return. Good on you gooners. If it wasn't for the Gooners, I would never have had breadfruit, so let's give it a crack. Uh, I've heard people actually um, cut it up and boil it up for a long time and then fry it. Uh, but it's a fruit, so I just let it um, go to the point of almost rotting and it is delicious. And as you can see, my friends, the bees, are loving it. I've got what, probably eight bees there. I just got to make sure I don't swallow one. Um, I like to share my food with the bees. So what's it like? It's like warm ice cream. Creamy, sweet, delicious. It's got a faint banana-y, fruity taste. It's bloody unreal. Now a lot of people think this is disgusting. There's uh, bees flying and eating my food. Well, if you've got, uh, if you're a germaphobe, you've got no place on this planet, I reckon. Just go ask a microbiologist. They're everywhere. Now I'm not talking about microbiologists, it's germs, they're everywhere. And besides, bees are very, very clean. They've even got natural antibodies in their hive. So, I don't care. Now, here's an example of how bees aren't dangerous. Look, this is full of bees. I'm gonna pick it up, and there's a couple on me already. I'm gonna show you what a jackfruit looks like. There we go, sorry, breadfruit. Except it was a bit more yellow, a lot more yellow when I was given, oh look, this one I'm going to have to move because he's going to get squished. Come on, that's it. Alright, as you can see people, the bees were vicious and they swarmed all over me to attack me. What utter, utter nonsense that is. A lot of grown-ups need to grow up out there, I reckon. And don't swat them, that's why they sting you. I don't know what's going to happen when Margarita gets back. I'll probably get kicked out and have to go live with the bees. Equipment check. Fake pro on tripod with tape weights to legs check. One boat and one rockner. Note the Mission Impossible way it spirals down to land on its feet facing the wrong way of course. Check. Nothing but quality. My Kiwi friend Stuart is driving my boat. Okay Stewie, go. Let's try an opposite pull. Dewey, go! Hang on, hang on, stop, stop. We have a pedestrian. I should state that no animals were harmed during the filming, except for a hermit crab that was accidentally donged by the camera, but I gave him a slab of fish to sit on and eat for a week, and there was no injunction forthcoming. Woohoo! Dewey, go! How good is that? A complete reverse pull that pulls the anchor over backwards. I think this would be rare, but it doesn't matter. The good old rockner sorts itself out in only three meters or so. I hear there is a problem from the local population up front, so I better check it out. Oh, you're friggin' kidding me. Looks like a goddamn town meeting. Okay, one gone, two more to go. Come on guys, this is all in the name of science. Well, the broadest possible definition of science. Come on please, go over there. Clearly one of these is a female. I would like them to go over there and have kindly asked them to, but they have cunningly worked out where I do not want them to go. And that is where they go. Yes siree Bob. Definitely female. No! Okay, we're on. A gold bracelet and diamond earrings later, she eventually moved. Woohoo! Nine 
100 degree pools and up to 160 degree pools, the rockness simply rotates while buried and sets in a new direction within a metre. This was not the real test I wanted to see. What does it do in weed? Because I've heard of problems. Let's do it. Okay, dodgy spiralling camera facing the wrong direction, check! There is no problem setting it. but a new direction causes it to fill up with the grass and sand. And then one more pull later, we seem to have a problem. And it keeps going and going and going. And look how clean the track is. It's not cleaning itself at all. 25 metres later and maybe 400, who knows? Well, there you go, people. Not much of a comprehensive test. I just heard the rumours about the weed and I just wanted to see for myself. We only did one anchor test and it just so happened it fouled itself. So let it be known that if you use a rockner anchor in weed, there is a possibility that if you have a squall at night and it pulls from a couple of different directions, or even one direction, who knows, um, that there's a possibility it'll foul itself with the weed and the soil and the mud and not be able to reset itself. Now, all anchors have their Achilles heel. I still think the Rockner is a bloody good anchor. I'm not sponsored by them, uh, by the way. Uh, but apparently I've heard that Mantis uh, anchors, which is a bit like a Rockner, a bit more spidery though, a bit thinner, and the hoop's bigger and thinner. Maybe the hoop is so large that it just allows the gunk to um, go through and it resets itself. I'm not sure about that, but you know, you can work it out. You've got brains too, people. Uh, I did write to Rockner about a year and a half ago when I was setting up uh, Freedom uh, for a new anchor and the Rockner had that uh, new anchor at the time. It didn't have the roll bar anymore but it had that really beautiful curved shank which I think took the, the part of the roll bar. Well, without the roll bar, maybe it does clean itself and it does reset. I'm not sure but Rockner didn't even bother to reply. I did write to a bunch of other anchor manufacturers and they all got back to me super promptly, I think within a day, saying, yeah, sure, you can have a free anchor. So maybe Rockner's customer service is not as good as their anchors. Uh, the trouble is with all the other anchor manufacturers, I had to pay for postage, which is fair enough, and it was going to cost the same as retail. So, bugger. small one has just made a break for it. It would be so easy to go for the bigger one because it's just sitting there. But a moving dog snapper
All right. Caramelized onions, chips, not the healthiest, and smoked grouper. Bloody awesome. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to eat just the carcass. I promised the smoked fillets. I'm giving them to my neighbour. What I found is when I gave the fish away to people, they were just doing fillets and throwing away the rest. And I think that's a tremendous waste. I mean, this poor fish has given up its life. The least we can do is respect it and eat all of it or as much as possible. I reckon the fillets are about 40%. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I reckon there's 40% all around the head and the bones and the, the wings and the tail. And there's 20%, you know, just bones and fins and carcass. So we're wasting 40%. And it's actually worse than that because the fillet is the drier, less tasty uh, flesh. Believe it or not, in the top of the fins and the bottom of the fins... It is so juicy and so fatty, and people go, oh, it's fat, I don't want to eat fat. This is good fat, people. This is good for you. That is awesome. So, you're really missing out. So, I urge you to have a go. I mean, lots of people are going to go, I'm not eating that, it's full of bones. Well, you're really missing out. Anyway, bon appetit to me. <laughs> That's what's left people. Fins, no skin or very little skin. I sucked out the eyeballs and all around the uh, brains. I broke open the vertebrae and sucked through the cords and sucked through the juices. Don't knock it until you try it. It's bloody delicious in the vertebrae. Wherever I could, I got it all the fat and um, obviously all the spines are here too. So this is what I guess you can waste. I mean, if I was really keen, I could chew all of this up and there'd be nothing left. But as a rough guide, this is what we can waste. Let's measure it. Point seven five five of a pound. Okay, on a momento, I'll do a little bit of mass and we'll work out the stats. Obviously, with eating all of this fish, I used my hands and I was quite a pig. Uh, so you ought not do that on a first date because you'll never see them again. Um, but with this discard and with the guts I threw out, it came to 22%. The fillet was 38%, and that leaves a whopping 40% of flesh and goodness still on the carcass. So there's a lesson to be learned, people. I mean, those resources are dwindling, and let's face it, I'm doing my part in doing that by killing these fish, but wherever I can, when I shoot a fish, I try not to shoot the biggest. I try and shoot something that I can eat. And when I do shoot it, I want to get as much out of it as possible. I mean, you should have seen Margarita, or you should see Margarita eat fish. It's better than that. It's damn impressive. And that's respect. I'm eating the uh, dog snapper. Well, I've eaten the dog snapper. This is what remains. So... It's a bit different to the grouper, mainly because a dog snapper is a leaner fish. It doesn't have as much flesh. So, and it was a smaller fish, so it's going to change a little bit. So, 31% is the discard. That's the vertebra, the jaws, the gills, the guts, etc. 35% is the fillet. And 34% is what remains on the carcass after you fillet it. So... The fillet does beat it in this case, however, 34% is still a huge percentage to waste, so we ought to just try it, I reckon. <laughs>